I sought peace, right? I, I look for peace. I joined ALA in 1970, found EJ, or EJ found me, and that's really when we were then able, under EJ's guidance and all of his connections, to get the American Library Association to eventually put together a blue ribbon panel to investigate racism at the Library of Congress. If EJ hadn't mentored me and other members of the Library of Congress staff, specifically Josh Williams, who unfortunately couldn't be here today, we would never really have gotten ALA to investigate the racial conditions, and I don't know what the conditions would be like today. So um, it's, it was a very long process, but EJ was absolutely pivotal in it um, because he knew ALA, he knew how to work everything. He told me when I should run for council. He told me who I needed to talk with. He told me that the Social Responsibilities Roundtable would be my avenue. He got Josh, who is black, into the Black Caucus. He mobilized everybody in the Black Caucus to put on the kind of advocacy and conscience, not consciousness, but conscience raising for the ALA in general, who most people respected the Library of Congress as an institution, which indeed, you know, it deserves respect as an institution, and we're simply not aware that here in a southern city with congressional appropriations committees that were run by southerners, that the conditions for personnel in the library were not good. And there was some resistance among the ALA executive board movers and shakers because you were going to take on the Library of Congress, you know, and, and that wasn't polite. And wasn't there a way to talk to them off screen? But ultimately, the, the systemic problems were so deep within the library that we really needed to take the action that we took, and EJ structured all of it. I was at Bowie State University working there as an assistant associate uh, library director there. He came out to recruit some of the students. We, you know, he and I had talked back and forth, and he came out to recruit some students into the library profession and to come out to University of Pittsburgh. And um, he ended up recruiting me. Uh, he was a, uh, a, a real mentor. Uh, he used to always tell me, you know, make sure you're presentable, make sure that you, you, you do the very best that you can. So I would always try to, you know, aspire towards that. Um, he was always trying to push, push us to do the best that we could do. And he wasn't, you know, uh, I, I, I don't remember him getting too perturbed or too angry at, 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 at any one of us. He, we, we felt like he was sort of a father figure for us and he kept us in that situation. He was also a mentor to a broad international commun uh, community. We had Vietnamese, we had uh, Africans from the continent, we had uh, Hispanics, we had people from Europe, uh, uh, Spanish-speaking people from Europe. We had a very broad mix of people in that organization, and uh, he used to sponsor uh, events at his home uh, and in other places as well to bring us all together for dinners. I think he's a humble person, uh, yet very powerful. You know, I see, I, I, I learned a lot from that. You know, I'm kind of surprised that he got as much done politically as he got done, uh, because uh, politics, from my perspective, is nasty. And we need more people who are uh, not arrogant, who are self-assured and calm to, to be in that environment so that as younger people uh, move through, they're not going to go sort of that, to that arrogant, uh, you know, abrasive 
way of doing politics. So he's got sort of a smooth way of doing politics, and I think we all can learn something from that. EJ uh, helped us to be a little, those of us who interact with him, white students, black students, all, helped us to be a little more humble, a little more uh, uh, sensitive to other people. Like E.F. Hutton, when EJ speaks, we all listen. <laughs> Because he's done much more than talk about diversity, he has created it. To rise above our prejudices, to build an open and truly equal society. Like Martin Luther King, E.J. Josie has envisioned a world in which everyone is judged by the content of their character and not the color of their skin. His positions that he's taken have not always brought him popularity at the time but they've always brought respect. Top priorities of the American Library Association, we try to do a service for all types of libraries in our country. My major goal as the president of the American Library Association during my term was to uh, reaffirm the public sector's responsibility in support of libraries. Well, certainly the thing that brought him to my attention first was the absolute courage he had in the integration of many things, but certainly in the integration, or in the, yes, in the integration of the American Library Association. It was because of EJ that uh, ALA said it would no longer go to, uh, to uh, communities that did not allow integrated housing for the members. Up to that point, there was segregated housing, and ALA went along with it. And EJ and a, and a group of people who worked with him and respected him enormously, I respected him for his fearlessness, for his passion, for his dedication to what was right. Uh, and he um, and he literally uh, desegregated ALA with the help of uh, of a few friends. Let's put it that way. Uh, so he was not somebody that was just in the books. He was someone who, whom we could see moving in the profession and making a difference and making change. So I would say that that was one of the things. The other thing is his ongoing influence over, over decades in terms of his development, his mentoring of, I, I could say, emerging majority students because we're in a country that's predicted to have no minorities by 2030 and I think uh, we're well on our way, we're all emerging majorities in fact, but he mentored many and made certain that they had leadership positions and then there were people like me uh, whom he mentored as well because he knew that I was someone who was listening to what he was saying and also although on a different uh, side of the coin in terms of my ethnicity certainly one who agreed with him in what he wanted to see done. So his his influence has been lasting for at least 35 years that I know of, and I would say probably 10 years before that. Uh, he was someone who, who has been, uh, I would say, one of the giants, one of the greats in the profession, easily. Anybody would say that who knew his work. <laughs>